Hi everyone, it is time to get started on the peppers. Where we left off with yesterday's video was to do the drawing and to mark out where the values were and the shadows. And if you were going to use the um, masking fluid, oops, I'm holding that up but the camera's not on. If you're gonna use the masking fluid, to put that on yesterday so it was ready for today. Um, I'm told masking fluid dries in 10 or 15 minutes. I like to use it, put it on at night, use it the next day and take it off, um, within that next day. Um, that's kind of that sweet spot before it starts to sink too far into the paper. So we're going to be working on the peppers. Um, as a reminder, here are what the peppers look like. There are three colored ones. This is going to be a lot like the coffee mug we did, except we're going to break it up into basically three organically shaped coffee mugs. We'll do each of the colors, the red pepper, the green pepper, and the yellow pepper. Um, and the green stems I'll do while I'm doing the green pepper. And then we'll do the shadows last, the, the cast shadows. Um, as you'll be able to see, this is a, a nice way to build a painting. Um, and this is a great subject for learning this because the colors are separated. When we get into more distinct subjects, you'll have to think about simplification, um, where you want the detail, where you want the colors. But this is a great way to start to think about value and to put down more than one color at a time. So here we have the drawing on the left and the basically the value image on the right as a reminder for me. Um, I can see the peppers on my screen so I can always touch, touch up the colors there. Before we go any further, what I thought I would do is give you a tour around the room or around my workspace and show you how I'm working. So here in front of my tabletop easel, you see we have the masking fluid out. That was only so that I could show you that I was using it yesterday for the peppers. I have two round brushes. Uh, these are rosemary brushes. These are actually the ones branded for Vlad Yelesiev. Um, they're from the Snowdrop series, and I like them very much. They're, again, Rosemary and Company out of England. They really come to a nice point, and they hold a lot of water. These are size 10 and size 12. I don't want to get too fussy and go tiny. As you can see, here is my 12-color pan set um, with a water jar behind it and then a ceramic palette. I'll be mixing my colors in there. When we get to mixing the colors, I will absolutely swing back and show you the palette again. So for now, let's go back to the, the artwork. And we're gonna do the, the peppers in stages. As I was saying, we'll do the, the red one first, and then the green and the different stems, and then we'll do the yellow one in front last. So basically we're working back to front. All right, so the red pepper. I'm gonna set out some of that pyrrole red medium from my QOR core watercolor set. Now that's a pure fire engine -y red. Let me show it to you. That's a really pure fire engine -y red. The pepper is warmer than that, but not by a lot. So I'm gonna add some yellow to it and make that the base color of the pepper. I'll swing it from there using some different colors to darken, as well as possibly some Payne's Gray for darkening so that we get the values we want. Uh, but that's what we're gonna start out with. And I like having three cameras. This is this is fun. I do want to get the the third camera mounted on an arm so it can show my mixing palette all the time. But until I do that, I'll do this thing where I switch around. Um, 
And for those of you that are interested, how am I doing this? Um, I have an application called Switcher on my iPad. And then the application is installed on, on two other iPhones. And I can control the cameras just like I was in a studio running the control panel all from the iPad. So when you see me talking, like now, when you see me, that's the camera from the iPad. Camera two is the camera that's on the artwork. And the third one is the one I just showed you where we were looking at the, the palette. So getting back to the palette, I'm going to add some nickel azo yellow to that red mix. And that makes it more of an orangey sort of a red. And looking at the red pepper, that's all we're working on now. You can see I have these areas marked out that are lighter then quite a bit of it is, is a deeper red, and the highlights are already masked out with masking fluid. So I can come in then, basically, because I have masked out the highlights, and everything, this is the lightest color on the pepper, I can basically paint the whole pepper except for the stem. Which means I can be loose, use a big brush like this. I mean, the 10 is not a terribly big brush, but it's certainly not a tiny brush. And you see I'm coming in just like we're doing the flat wash. If you were in my basic class or you've watched the, the, the washes video, I'm keeping a bead. I'm not letting it dry out and I'm doing this. Guess what? I don't want to frighten anybody, but really all we've done here just a flat wash. And as long as I'm pretty careful by the yellow pepper, don't let it run down. So control your bead at that point. Try to time it so that that's the point where you're running out of paint. And I'm going to come in and just grab some paint out of that bead so that it's not stuck there. It doesn't run onto my yellow when I need it. And I had a little bit of a empty spot that I didn't want. Now we can actually even go in and add a little bit more water dry out the brush and make those highlight areas even a little bit lighter. Okay, that's got to dry. And then when I come back, we'll start to build up the, the layers. I'm gonna cheat this. I'm a little uneven here on the yellow pepper. So I'm just gonna cheat that line, get it to look right. Um, and I was going to let this dry, but the reality is that what I can do is work wet into wet. As long as I keep this red wet right now, I can come in with some of the dark. So let's just grab that bead. I re-wet the pepper so that it was still wet. I don't want to lose that wetness. And I'm putting a little bit of purple into its own well, as well as some, some Payne's gray. And we can use both of those with some of that red to make the darker red color. So. We are looking at my palette now. I've got the red mixture with a little bit of the azo yellow top left. Then I added some purple and some Payne's gray, and I'm mixing the three together to get a darker tone that I can then start to put in to the pepper. Now, I have to stop talking for a second and start painting. 
Yep, this is still wet enough that I can do this and work around the areas that are supposed to be light. I'm going to dry out my my brush on my tea towel and simply come along here and pick up the bead. And Because this paper is still wet, I'm touching, I added some more nickel azo yellow to my red. And I'm dropping it in up near the top so that we get a really nice blend of colors here. And again, washing out and drying my brush and then picking up the bead at the bottom because we don't want this to run into the other pepper. This is a point where we want it to have a discrete. That pepper is starting to take on some life. Um, now what we can do is it's darkest down in here and in this section. So I can pop in some more purple and then dry out my brush again just come by like a street sweeper and you're just dancing I want you to dance dance the tip of the brush on the paper Now I hit the yellow pepper with my brush. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's pretty light. You probably won't notice, but I'm going to wash out my brush right now and see if I can't wiggle that out of there just by getting it wet and then blotting it. There we go. See, there are no real emergencies in watercolor. nice thing too with this is that once it's wet it only goes where it's wet it really won't you got to really get it wet to push it into areas that are, are that are dry that value nice and dark down here and every time I come in and soak it up it lightens a little bit so I want to be careful but I don't want it to run either so what I'm doing now is just picking up the bead and dropping it back up in higher okay well, I think that red pepper really has some nice definition. I'm going to let this dry. Okay, we are back. Just checking my audio levels here. Good. Okay, so we're moving on to the next section. And give you a peek at my palette again as we switch over to camera three. Q camera three, <laughs> I feel like a director. Okay, so here we are again. Now, this color up here is mostly sap green, although I put a little phthalo blue green shade in it to cool it off a little bit because when I looked at the 
the picture of the pepper sap green was a little bit too yellow. So I adjusted that. I made a darker version by pulling some of this green over into another tub and adding some ultramarine blue and a little bit of red. So I've got a darker one. This is cadmium yellow primrose that I can use for light bits. I can connect it right with the, the green. Um, it's handy to have on the palette if you want to make little lighter sections. Might be good for the stems. So that's all the stuff I need for there. And we're back. So I'm going to paint in um, the light yellow. I mean, I'm sorry, the light green over the green pepper and the stems. And then when that's dry, we'll come in and we'll do some more darker work. And my red pepper is only barely touches the green one. And it's almost dry, so I can go right up to it, should be fine. And again, I'm gonna put this light color everywhere because I've covered the highlights with the masking fluid. So this is the lightest color of the green pepper. And I'm being a little careful going around the yellow pepper. I'm grabbing a little bit stronger tint as we get down to the bottom. Because if you look at the photograph, it definitely is a little bit darker down there. And we've, we've got our bead that we're going to collect down in the bottom right corner. All right. Again, guess what did you do? It's another flat wash. So these sections, these lighter sections around the highlights, that's basically all we really painted right now because we'll go darker on top of it. And we painted the stem. And now I'm gonna put a green color in for the stems of the other two again this is the lightest we build always in watercolor well what do i say about always always is never um 99 of the time in watercolor you work light first and build up to dark okay so now we've got that first layer of the green in there is there any more I can do? Well, yeah, I can come in with that darker color, working wet into wet again. And again, we, we can do this because we have the, the highlights masked off. So certainly some of those areas that are darker back here is darker. Go right up to the pepper, the red pepper. We can go up like this. Again, we're working with the tip of the brush. We're dancing on the paper. We're not mushing our brush in too far. I'm gonna take a minute to give this pepper a more peppery sort of shape. If you want to 
soften any of these edges where you get from dark to light. Just grab a brush, fill it with water, and then blot it out most of the way. And while the paper is still wet, you can come in and just kind of scrumble around and give that a softer edge. I can also come in here where I know it's darker at the bottom, where it's the light is kind of hidden by the yellow pepper in front and start to drop in some of that darker green. Especially right now, it's still wet. So we're getting that soft. There we go. Correcting that shape just a little bit more. All right, we've reached a point where we have to let that dry. So I'm going to come back later and we will start to work on two things. We will darken some more of the green. While we're at it, we'll grab an, a darker color yet for here on the red and we'll finish the stems and that will leave the yellow and the shadows to go. So, um, in fact, I'm going to call this the, I'm going to call this the end of part two, rather than try and run this all the way out to, um, an hour long video. So we've done the red and the green at this point. We'll do a little bit more work on the red and the green in the next video, and then start the yellow. So go ahead and catch up with me, and then in the next video, we'll get started on the rest of it. And uh, remember, this is really doing them one at a time. You're really still just doing the coffee cup, where you, you decided what the values were, you went one color, and just went lighter, and then darker and darker. It's the same concept, we're just breaking it down into um, several organic shapes. Okay, we are back. Um, let's finish up the stems. And I wanna darken that red before we move on to the yellow. So I hope you're enjoying this. I'm really having fun making it. All right, so Looking at this, now you get to do a little squiggly brush work. These things are uneven. So it gets to be something like that. Let me paint. Dark in here. And that's a fairly believable stem without having to do too much work. The red one, let's keep that whole left side light. I'm going to come down around this corner. Do that. And there's going to be some of that. And that's plenty for the red one. The green one, we get a little bit lost because we're in the green pepper. So we, I'm gonna darken this up. I'm gonna darken this shape around the stem so that we can tell what stem And what is not. All right, so that's how I'm going to treat that. That's better. And that dark kind of ran into All right, 
So we've done touch-ups on the green pepper. I'm going to let that sit as it is for now. Now, how do I want to darken up that red pepper? I'm going to try this. This is... Um, red I think I need more red in this mixture there we go this is the red with some Payne's gray yeah this was too light before but now coming in with a little bit thicker paint Careful not to hit that green pepper since we re-wet it. So just come right up to the edge like that. Yep, this is definitely making the red pepper pop, which is something we need to do. Because... that will push the yellow pepper forward and really pull off the whole design. Just remember where you mapped out your, your lights and darks. There. Look at that. Really, really got a nice red pepper going there. This building up in layers, starting from light to dark, is definitely the way you want to work with this stuff. And if you decide you want to go even darker down here, you can simply just drop some in and maybe drop it here too and then the last bit we need to do is I wash wash out my brush. Dry it out so that I can soften this edge. Soften that right there. Soften it right there. Okay, that's looking real good. I'm gonna let this dry totally. And then we will come back and do the yellow pepper and the shadows and the painting will be done. And that last bit, the reveal of taking off the masking fluid will be really great. At that point, I might decide to put a light grayish wash on the background because that'll help make the whites that are paper white really pop. But we're, we're cruising right along with this one and I'll be able to show it off in my Tuesday class at Mounts tomorrow. So keep painting and once this is dry, I'll come back and we'll start on the rest of it.